That's better? Okay. So, I hope you have had a wonderful dinner. Um, in this talk, I'm going to give you a hands-on introduction to Laravel. It's targeted uh, towards people that have never worked with, uh, with Laravel before. And we're going to yeah, give a, a really gentle um, introduction. So, chest, everybody. Uh, I'm Freek van der Herten. I'm a partner and a developer uh, at a company called Spasi. We're based in, uh, in Belgium, in Antwerp. Uh, like many of you, I'm active on Twitter. My handle is Freek Merze. I have a blog, merze.be, where I talk about modern PHP development and Laravel. And in my free time, I'm currently building my first SaaS application called Oh Dear. Um, I'm also a meeting group organizer. Together with uh, my friends Dries and Frederik, I organize the PHP Antwerp user group. If you're ever in the vicinity of Antwerp, we're always on the lookout for speakers. Let us know and we'll give you a spot to, uh, to talk. Now, my company, Spasi, has been around since 2003. We create websites, applications, and web shops. Our team is quite small. We consist of five developers and one manager. And we specialize in Laravel development. Now, before heading into Laravel, I want to say a few things about open source software. Uh, at our company, we use a lot of open source software. I've listed some of uh, the things we use almost daily on this slide. Nginx, Laravel itself, Ubuntu, PHP, Elasticsearch, yeah, everything on that slide. And yeah, I bet that many of you uh, thank your jobs also due to the fact that open source software exists. Because we use so much open source software, we try to give uh, something back to. Uh, our company now is uh, over 100 packages on packages. I think it's over 150 right now. Uh, most of them are Laravel specific, but we have a few uh, framework agnostic PHP and JavaScript ones as well. They've been downloaded for 6 million times now, and they are growing at a pace at uh, 700,000 downloads uh, a month. Uh, a small bragging here, uh, this is a site, GitHub Awards, that just sums up all the stars of a GitHub uh, organization. And this is the top of the PHP organizations, and we are uh, number two worldwide now, which is quite nice with a team of, of just five developers. You can find our open source stuff at our company website. I'm sure there's something there that can be of use in your next project. But those packages, they are not entirely free. They have a special license on them called uh, Postcardware, because we love postcards. Um, and if you use any of our packages, you are required to send a postcard to our office. And we publish them on our uh, website. So this is our address, let the postcards come. Cool. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Laravel. So what is Laravel? It's, uh, I guess everybody knows this, it's a PHP framework. It's uh, created by Taylor Otwell and it is uh, being um, developed with a small uh, core team. It can be used to create uh, projects of all sizes, uh, small, medium, large, it, uh, it doesn't matter. Laravel can, uh, can handle that all. Uh, the latest release at the moment is Laravel 5.5. .5. And Laravel has a bi-yearly uh, release cycle. Uh, there's a new uh, version in the summer and there's a new version in the winter. So probably in January, Laravel 5.6 uh, will come out and in the summer of next year, Laravel 5.7. And in those uh, releases, uh, lots of new features uh, are being added. So, what makes Laravel special in my mind? Um, I think first and foremost, uh, an amazing community. Um, all the people in the Laravel community are very helpful towards uh, each other. Uh, if you take a look at the PHP, at the Laravel subreddit, you'll see that there are friendly conversations there everywhere. Um, Laravel also has a big emphasis on developer happiness. It will go out of its way to give you a clear syntax uh, to, to work with. 
Laravel also comes with batteries included, which I'm going to talk about a little bit next. There are a lot of features that you can use to uh, create a very powerful project in a small amount of time. Also very important is that Laravel is human readable documentation. You can almost read it uh, as a book, the documentation, from, from start, to, uh, start to finish. The documentation received quite some attention from uh, Taylor Otwell, the creator of uh, Laravel. At every point release, he basically goes through it all again and rewrites it a little bit to make it better and better, and I think uh, it shows. And in the Laravel ecosystem, there are also some excellent learning uh, resources. There are lots of blogs and video tutorial sites where you can find good information how to build quality applications with, uh, with Laravel. Now, I've said that Laravel comes with batteries included. I've listed some of uh, them on the, on the next slides, and this one too. Uh, Laravel comes with uh, elegant routing. That's one of the first things you'll, uh, you'll see when creating an application. You must uh, create some routes. And with Laravel, that's laughably easy. Um, also um, built in is an, uh, is an ORM called Eloquent. It's an active uh, record ORM. But if you prefer Data Mapper, it's uh, easy to uh, install Doctrine as well and just don't care about the Eloquent ORM. That being said, Eloquent is also really powerful to build, uh, build stuff with. There's also uh, an, uh, a custom uh, templating engine in there called Blade. And like with the ORM, if you uh, prefer to uh, use another templating system, that's no problem. It's easy to uh, use something else if you don't like Blade. Um, there is also a command runner in there called Artisan, so you can define some commands uh, that must be run uh, uh, on, the, on the terminal, and you can also schedule those commands. I'm going to give a little example of that later. There's also an asset pipeline built in here, so if you have some JavaScript uh, that needs to be pre-compiled, or some uh, CSS that needs to be pre-compiled, Laravel has uh, some things in there as well to do that pre-compilation. There are also functions for authorization and authentication. Uh, Laravel has a neat uh, scaffolding um, uh, authorization command where you can uh, build a, a logging system in, uh, in a couple of minutes. There is also support for queues. So if you have long running jobs, you can push those to, uh, to the background to make uh, your application seem faster to, uh, to the user. There is also things in there for event broadcasting. What's, uh, what can you do with event broadcasting? You can um, broadcast events to a client which receives them uh, via WebSockets. And that's basically the backbone of building real-time apps. So Laravel can help you with that as well. There's also things built in uh, for sending notifications. So if there something happens in your application and you want to notify a user via uh, Slack or via another messaging platform, there are functions included for that as well. And to test your code, there are lots of testing facilities uh, in there as well. So it really comes with uh, batteries included. There are also some other batteries that uh, are not included, but, uh, but available for you to, to optionally install. I've listed some of them here. The first one is Socialite. That's a package that you can pull in, and then um, you can uh, authenticate with uh, Facebook, Twitter, and, uh, and Google. Passport is an OAuth server for if other applications need to uh, authenticate with your application. Horizon is a really cool thing. It's basically a dashboard uh, that visualizes your queued jobs. And there's also a back-end component that can prioritize which jobs should be run, run where. It's a fairly new addition to the ecosystem, and I'll demonstrate it in a bit. There's also Scout, which provides a full text uh, search via an online service called Algolia. And there's also a package called Echo, which can handle um, uh, WebSockets on the client side. That's a, a JavaScript package. If you want to 
run your code locally if you want to develop uh, some code. There are some things in the ecosystem that can help you as well. First, there's uh, Homestead, which is a, a virtual box. It's one of the most pop popular uh, virtual uh, boxes, I think. It comes with a modern version of PHP, it comes with Redis, it comes with uh, Memcached in, uh, installed. Um, if you don't like virtual machines, there is also Valet, which I use myself. And it's basically a very thin layer on your Mac. Um, and it leverages a locally installed Nginx and PHP installation. And you can basically say to Valet, I want to host um, this uh, folder on Nginx and it will do all the configuration for you. I'll show it you, to you in a bit. And there is also a newer addition to the ecosystem uh, to run code locally. It's called Vessel and that is a uh, Docker configuration uh, specifically made for, uh, for Laravel. There are some tools to uh, help you run your code in production if your um, project is ready. Um, there are two um, things that you can use to deploy your code. The first one is Envoyer. It's uh, a SaaS built by uh, Taylor Otwell, the creator of Laravel himself, and it can perform uh, zero downtime uh, deployments for you. If you don't want to uh, use a SaaS for that, there's also Envoy, which is something um, where you can be, uh, write deployment scripts very easily in, and write your own zero downtime deploy. Forge is also uh, a SaaS uh, application and it can be used to um, uh, provision servers where your Laravel applications can run upon. Okay, I've um, thrown a lot of uh, things here at you at the slides. Um, but I think it's also nice to just see a little bit of Laravel, to get a, a feeling of how it works. So we're just going to start from scratch and we're going to yeah, tinker a little bit around with it. Okay, let's go over to the command line and let's go here in the terminal and let's yeah, just start a new Laravel, Laravel application. How do you do that? Well, there's a, a package that you can um, pull in via, um, via Composer and install it globally. And it's called um, Laravel. And you can just make a new site here. So, PAP Central Europe demo. And then it will craft your application. So, we'll give, give that a little bit of time. And then, with any luck, it will complete. And now I can go to that directory here, open it in PHP Storm. I'll make it a little bit bigger for you guys. Oh, this is the wrong one. It's this one. So, this is here the application that was just uh, crafted. And this is the, yeah, the default folder structure of a Laravel application. So let's go through that really quickly. We have here our app folder. And the most important thing here is the HTTP folder. Here uh, the controllers live. And uh, the middleware uh, lives here as well. Uh, I've said that there is a command runner in Laravel. That one lives in here. Here you have the, the console commands and the console kernel. I'm going to give you a little bit uh, demonstration of that later. Um, all the configuration of, uh, of Laravel happens here in that config folder. And you can see there's a lot of things that uh, can be configured, but there are same defaults here. So if I open up that uh, app configuration here, let me close that out. You can set an application uh, name here. Um, you can uh, turn on the debug mode, you can set the URL of your app, and you can see that everything here in all those files uh, has, um, has some nice comments here so that you know what, uh, what you can, can use here. So if you want to use memcached here for, uh, for your caching, you can just do memcached uh, here and then you, uh, your application will use memcached. Okay, let's go a little bit further. Here we have the database folder 
the most important thing here is the migrations. So the migrations, they, uh, they live here. So migrations come into uh, Laravel default as well. Um, this is the public uh, folder. Nothing special in here. Here's the index PHP where yeah, every request will go through. More interesting folder here is the resources folder. So here, um, the, the JavaScript you write and the SAS you write uh, will live. So I've said that there is an um, asset um, pipeline uh, in Laravel. It's called Laravel Mix, and it will basically uh, compile all the JavaScript and SAS you write here and um, put the compilated uh, files in the public directory uh, in the CSS and the JavaScript uh, directory. Okay, that's the asset folder. Uh, and here in the resources is also the view layer. So all the views, all the blade templates, they will live in this folder. We also have a routes folder. And here all the routes of your application uh, live. So this application has just uh, one route, a get route. And if you just go to uh, uh, the naked domain, then you see uh, the view called welcome, which is the view, the HTML that's, uh, that's in there. Then we have uh, the storage here. We have some application storage here where if you need to store something here, if you need to write something, you best do it in this application. And the framework has its own uh, folder here where it will, if you use file cache, it will uh, put it here. It will, uh, if you use file sessions, it will put those files here. And it will also uh, compile all the blade views, so they will render a little bit faster, and it will save the compiled files here. So that's, in a nutshell, the structure of a uh, Laravel application. Now, how can we see this application in our browser? Well, um, that's uh, Laravel Valet that uh, will handle that for us. And what Laravel Valet will do is it will um, add, it will make this possible. It will use the directory name of, uh, of your application and, it, and with .dev behind it, um, it will um, make that available. So if I go to, uh, to this URL now, nothing will happen because I haven't linked the site yet. But if I now say in this folder, Valet, link this directory to your Nginx configuration, I have to put in my password here, then we see our Laravel application here, uh, here up and running. Okay. Let's take a little bit of a look at the routing. So, this application has only one route. So you can see here that we see uh, that, uh, that welcome view here. Let's do, uh, let's do something else. So if I do uh, hey here, then you see hey. Fair enough. If you return an array here, a, uh, this one here, then it will output uh, JSON for you. Um, of course, if you need to, to have uh, post routes and it's just post here or put or delete, cool. And there's also a shorthand form here for if you uh, want to, if you just want to um, uh, put a view here, then you can do route view and just put the name of the, of the view there and that will be, uh, be just the same. Cool. But mostly, you aren't going to um, uh, use just view files. You want to have controllers, right? So you can add controllers. So there's um, a command line tool that I've, uh, that I've set that's included in Laravel. It's called Artisan. And if you run it, then you see all the available commands that, uh, that Artisan has. And one of the, the commands, of the host of the commands that test are the make commands, which can help you just to create um, small stuff very, very easily. Let's use artisan, php artisan make, to make a controller. So 
let's uh, do it here, uh, test controller. And then you can see here in app HTTP controllers that we have that test uh, controller here. So if I just return here hi from the controller, uh, I've done something wrong. Return. Ah, sorry. Public function index, of course. Return i from the controller. And if I go to my web file here again, and I'm going to make a new route here, a route test, and we're going to the test controller at index. And that's how you create now a new route. So if I go to test here, then we get high from the controller. So that's very easy. Um, imagine you have a, a bunch of routes that needs to be prefixed with, uh, with something else. Then you can use uh, the prefix uh, command in the routing and uh, group some routes. So imagine that I want to uh, prefix this with my prefix. Uh, and then I can group this one here. Test, oh, here. And I'm going to do it like this. My prefix test, and now this should be my prefix test. Yeah, it's still the same. Yeah, and of course, if I need another thing with uh, uh, with that prefix, it's just another route there, and that's that. It's oh, test two, not my prefix two. Okay, it's all uh, it's all very very simple. Now, if you want to see which routes there are in your app, Laravel has got you covered as well. We have here a route list command, and it basically had a the layout is a little bit mumbo jumbo because my screen size is so low, but here you can see uh, all the uh, routes that are available now in, uh, in my application. Okay, um, what's another thing that you can do here? Imagine that you have a special route in your application that you want to refer to, then you can name a route. So if I want to give this route a name, I just put name behind it, name um, my name. And one of the nice commands that uh, Artisan has is the tinker command. And here, I'm uh, in this prompt, I'm inside my Laravel application. And I, it's, a, it's a REPL. I can just uh, perform any command that I want. And there is a helper function to get the URL of a, rame, of a named route and that uh, function is called route. And if I give that my name, then I get the full uh, route URL of, of this one. So that's how that works. Okay, let's do something uh, more interesting. So I have my welcome view here. Let's build a quick login system. So Laravel has another um, cool make command called odd. But wait, I'm going to um, quickly make a git repository from this directory so you can see which, which files have changed. PHP arson make auth. Authentication scaffolding uh, generates successfully. That's nice. If I do uh, git status, then you can see that our uh, that Laravel added a home controller and added some, some views and some layouts to my, to my application. So if I go to the home route now, then you can see here that we have a login and register um, functionality here. Okay, just let's try it. Login. I have a login screen, but I haven't got a username and a password yet. So I'm going to try to, uh, to register here. So, uh, Freek. Uh, not telling you, not telling you. Register, and of course that, that goes wrong because we don't have 
uh, a database yet. But as you can see, um, Laravel has really nice uh, error pages as, uh, as well. Uh, these are powered by a third party uh, library called, uh, called Whoops. Okay, but let's, um, let's fix that error. So we must run our migrations to create our, uh, our user table. So if, you, um, if you've noticed, in the database folder, there are some default migrations here for creating user table and creating a password table. And that's what's needed for that authentication scaffolding. So let's migrate the database. Um, but that um, does, doesn't go because the credentials aren't filled in yet. So the database credentials, they can be filled in an environment file. So lots of other frameworks and applications do this too. They put the sensitive information in an environment file that you don't put in, uh, in a Git uh, repository. Okay. Um, database, PHPCE, the username of my valet powered database is called route. It has no password. So with any luck, I can migrate the database now. Okay, it can connect, but it doesn't have that database. So let's quickly create a database. Create uh, PHPCE. This is just a MySQL uh, terminal. Uh, this has nothing to do with, uh, with Laravel, this, uh, this thingy. Uh, create database, database, PHPCE. Okay, we've created a database. And with any luck, we can migrate now. And sure enough, we are migrated. Um, so, if I try that form input again, we are now logged in and I've uh, got a user fake here. Okay, let's take a look at uh, that controller. So I'm going to close that uh, terminal here. Um, uh, da -da -da. The home controller. So this is the new controller that, uh, that Laravel created for me. And I can, uh, there is a middleware on this, uh, on this controller uh, that's being um, set in here in the, in the constructor function. So only when this middleware passes here, the authentication middleware, you can see this page. So if I uh, log out and try to go to home again, that won't, uh, that won't work. So this home, I get redirected to, uh, to the login page. Now, personally, I don't like that middleware is in, uh, in the controller itself. It, it's uh, easy to add it also to, um, uh, to, 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 to the routes file here. Um, let's, just, let's just try that for a, for a moment. So I have here that, uh, those two routes here, my prefix and test. So my prefix and test, which are perfectly um, watchable without being logged in. Um, if I give those a middleware, middleware auth, then they will get redirected to the login page because they are now not viewable for, uh, for guest users. So if I log in here now, test, test, and now, I can view that route. So you can see I've built yeah, some authenticated pages here in a, in a couple of, uh, of minutes. Um, let's see what we can uh, demonstrate next. Um, package installation. So there are a lot of packages in the in Laravel ecosystem. And uh, in Laravel 5.5, there is a new feature called package auto discovery, which makes it very easy to install uh, packages. The only step required is Composer Require. Let me demonstrate it by pulling in a package, Composer Require, one made by uh, Barry van den Heuvel, and he built a debug bar for Laravel. So if the Wi-Fi gods are happy, this will be pulled in. Boom, boom, boom. And with any luck, if I go to uh, my home page here again, we should see a debug bar here pop up. See, this is incredibly powerful. It just installed in under a, under a minute. Now, this debug bar, 
uh, what uh, what does it do? It can see it can let you see which uh, views uh, are rendered, which uh, route is used, which queries uh, were used to uh, to build up uh, this page, which exceptions were thrown, a timeline. See, it's really a, a nice uh, little package. Let's do that one more time, pulling in a package. Um, I've built a package uh, called Laravel Tail, which makes it, oh, it's past Laravel Tail, oh, no, Composer Require, Require, it's Laravel Tail, which makes it very easy to tail the, uh, the application log, which is very handy uh, if you use the log to, uh, yeah, to put some errors there. So if I, I've just used um, uh, Composer Require here, and if I run PHP Artisan again, uh, there should be a tail command in there that wasn't there before, tail, tail the latest log file. And yeah, if I uh, run it here, and then if I, I think, visit a page that doesn't exist, I should see, shouldn't I see an error here? Hmm. Yeah, but you get the idea. Normally, there would be an error in this, uh, in this log. So that's, if I just run tail, yeah, then you can see the last lines of, that, uh, of the application log. Okay. Um, let's see, what can we show some more? Creating artisan commands. That's also a fun uh, little thing. So I've said that uh, Laravel comes with uh, its, uh, its own scheduler and its own way of uh, creating commands. Let's create a command. So it's also make helper, make a command, test command. And here we have a new folder here, test commands. And you can see here that it has created a class, test command, which extends the, the base command, Flowerfell. You can give it a signature, signature, hi, everybody. And in the handle method, you can display some text. Handle, uh, oh, sorry, not handle, info. Hello, world. And then it needs to be registered in the kernel. That's a manual step you do it uh, to do yourself. So here you must register that test command that we just created. So Laravel will pick up on that. And if you do uh, now PHP artisan, hi everybody then it should say hello world. So that's how you create commands uh, for, uh, for Artisan. Now, if you have uh, some meaningful command, because yeah, nobody's going to write this in their real <laughs> applications, but if you have a real command that, I don't know, uh, checks all your, your orders, or something, and uh, sends, out, sends out mails, and you need to do that regularly, then you can um, schedule a command. So here, a little bit below, there's also a function in the, in the kernel called, um, uh, called schedule. And here, you can uh, schedule that command. I had just, uh, hi, everybody. And I want to do that uh, maybe every 50 minutes or every, every minute. And that's how you can schedule stuff. Now, if you... Um, want to have the scheduler really up and running on your server, then you need to um, install one uh, task in your cron job, which will call a specific task, a scheduled task of the Laravel app every minute. And Laravel itself will then decide, okay, which tasks should I run this minute? So that's, uh, that's how that works. Okay. Um, how are we on time? Okay, I'm going to show you one uh, cool last thing, and that is Horizon, which is a fairly new addition to the uh, to the ecosystem. It's um, a thing that can help you uh, visualize uh, scheduled jobs and uh, help you prioritize them. Um, 
let's first pull in uh, Horizon. So it's, um, wait, I'm going to take a look at the documentation because I, I simply forgot um, what the package name was. So this is the documentation of Laravel. Composer require Laravel Horizon. Uh, okay, let's do that. And because there are some front-end assets there that uh, need to be published, uh, there's a second command that, uh, that must be run. Uh, we are going to publish some, uh, some assets. Let me paste it here. So now Laravel will copy some files from its vendor directory to uh, the conf configuration directory of this application and to the public uh, directory so it, uh, it can show us some new things. If I go to Horizon in my application now, then I should see the, uh, the Horizon, Horizon dashboard here. So this is all in, in the application I, uh, I just created. Okay, how can we um, use Horizon? Um, yeah, let's, let's do something. Um, let's create a job. And a job is some long running task that you, uh, you want to handle. So make job, I'm going to do the test job here. And you can see here there is a new directory called jobs, test job. Marvel created a little bit for us here. And the work that should be done should be coded here in this handle function. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sleep here for, uh, for a minute, uh, no, for a second. And um, how are you going to do this? Um, yeah, if uh, minimum and maximum two, so there's one chance in two that this job will just fail. Throw uh, exception and uh, base exception here. Isn't this, this right? Exception. Uh, da, da, da. Import constant. Ah, okay, I got it. Throw new exception, of course. Got it. Like this. Okay. Now I'm going to uh, my controller here. And I'm going to um, return all my jobs are done. But before I do that, I'm going to for uh, for each, and I'm going to do it uh, ten times. See, I'm going to dispatch, dispatch. I'm going to use the helper function here. What I'm going to do that test job that I just created. Now, Laravel has lots of these little helper functions to make your uh, code small. Um, some people love them, some people hate them. I personally love them. If you don't like uh, using um, these little helper functions, you can uh, uh, use dependency injection as well. Uh, I'll just uh, show you what the equivalent is. You can uh, inject here the dispatcher, the bus dispatcher, dispatcher. It's a little bit more of a pause. Wait, PHP Storm can probably help us here. This dispatcher, and then you can do here this uh, dispatcher, dispatch, new test job. And that's, that's basically the same thing as that, uh, that little helper function. So yeah, but I prefer the, the helper function. Uh, let's clean this a little bit up here. So, um, the test controller. I'm going to uh, move this out again so we can just run that by visiting test. And if I, uh, no, there is something more I must do. In the environment, 
I must say that the um, Q driver is Redis, because Laravel uh, Horizon just uses Redis as a backend. Um, oh, uh, no. Let's do uh, let's do sync here first, so you can see uh, see the difference. So if I go to um, test here now, yeah, then you see there is an exception here, and I have to wait a little bit because I I go through those uh, those sleep things. Okay, let's yeah use queues and just do that all in the queue here, just by using the queue that I've read is here and by starting up Horizon. Horizon started, and I'm going to do Horizon open here, so you can see that this is now active, recent jobs, nothing. If I go to that route again, we see immediately all my jobs are done, but they are queued. You can see here, we have our test jobs, and with a little bit of luck, we will see some uh, jobs complete here in a sec. Ah, these have all failed. Okay. <laughs> I would suspect that some of them would have, uh, have passed. And if you click uh, a test job here, then you can see here, you yeah, the, uh, the stack trace of why the, uh, uh, the job failed. And you can even yeah, try to restart it here. And then in a second, it will come here and it's back pending and it's put back on the, on the queue. So that's, uh, that's how Horizon uh, works. Cool. Um, so I hope you've noticed that, that you can do a lot in, uh, in, a, in a little time. In this demo, you've seen that I've built yeah, some authentication and yeah, did, yeah, some cool stuff with, um, with, the, with the queues here. Um, and yeah, Laravel makes it really, really easy for us. Back to the presentation. So if you want to know, know uh, more uh, about Laravel, I can um, yeah, suggest that you visit these links. Uh, the first one is just the documentation, but the documentation is really top-notch. It's, uh, it's yeah, like I've said in the beginning, it's human uh, readable. You can write it, uh, read it from start to finish. Um, the Laravel source code is in the uh, Laravel organization on GitHub. Um, if you are a visual learner and want to um, um, yeah, see some videos of how you can use Laravel, uh, go visit uh, laravelfromscratch.com. That's um, uh, a video course on Laracast. There's the, the link uh, below that. That's a site operated by Jeffrey Way where he daily posts new videos on Laravel and everything that might be interesting to uh, users of the Laravel ecosystem. There are lots of videos on Vue, on JavaScript there as well. If you want to stay current with what's, in the, what's happening in the Laravel ecosystem, uh, then you should pay a visit to laravelnews.com. There are also uh, some nice community resources. Uh, Larachat.com uh, gets, uh, there you can get an invitation to the official Slack channel of, uh, of Laravel users. I think there are almost 50,000 uh, people on, uh, on that Slack channel. Um, a very good blog about Laravel is uh, Matt Stauffer's blog. He's uh, a guy that's uh, been in the Laravel community for quite some time and he writes excellent uh, articles. Um, if you uh, are on Twitter, then I suggest you visit the third link. It's a Twitter list that Jeffrey Way uh, compiled with, uh, uh, with some people that have interesting things to say about Laravel. Um, the fourth link is a, a so-called awesome GitHub repo. It's just a, a very long readme with links to other uh, packages and tutorials and videos about the Laravel ecosystem. And of course, at our company website, uh, yeah, go take a look uh, to which packages that we've, uh, we've made for, uh, for Laravel. Now, if you like going to conferences, you'll be happy to know that there are a few uh, dedicated Laravel conferences. There's one in, uh, in the US, 
uh, and there's one in uh, in the EU. Mostly they happen in the in the summer, um, and they're they are not only about larval. So if you uh, are only mildly interested in larval but want to uh, learn more about how to create web applications, then those uh, uh, conferences are quite interesting too. Uh, this one we have skipped for because I didn't have the time. So, Jank uh, Uye, I think. So I've uploaded slides to Speaker Deck. Uh, yeah, and go visit my blog if you want to learn some cool stuff about PHP and Laravel. Are there any questions? Yes. Hello. So I have two questions. One, yeah. you mentioned in the beginning that you need some additional s software packages to ease the to ease the running, or are they required to run? Uh, they are not required to run. So you mean uh, the the Scout one and the Horizon one? Yeah. They are not required. If you want um, if you want to create just a simple application where you don't need uh, queues or where you don't need uh, yeah those search functionalities, just don't install those packages, and the application will just so run fine. So where nginx and PHP FPM will be enough to yeah to run. Yeah. Yeah, okay, and the enough. second question about the routing, I is there any other way of storing them, like in array or something, uh, or only in the uh, anonymous function? Yeah, it's, fluid it's, way? it's the default way of doing it is, is closure based, um, and that's basically now the only way you uh, you can do it. There's, there are also some some helper functions there that, that can help you if you want to do it in a slightly other way. And of course, yeah, you can yeah, just generate those routes yourself from, from something else. If you have some uh, routes in a, yeah, in a database, yeah, then you just create a little loop and just yeah, register those routes inside that loop. You can, although it isn't um, really conventional, you can register a route from anywhere in your application. It doesn't have to be in that file. I don't suggest you go do this, but you could register routes in controllers, but don't do that. But okay, thanks. Cool. Yes. Uh, first, thank you for the great talk. Uh, I would like to thanks. ask uh, uh, this dispatching mechanism, uh, like when you schedule something to happen hourly, what yeah. does it use underneath to actually uh, trigger the, the actual thing to happen? Um, if you dispatch something, uh, it will be uh, uh, the job will be written in uh, in a Redis in Redis uh, in Redis uh, yeah queue I think, and there are uh, functions in Horizon, um, the process control functions I think that will trigger when something happens there. It's something that's newly introdu introduced into PHP 7.1. But it also works in PHP 7.0, but slightly slower. Not not as fast as I've uh, seen here. It's not polling. It's something else. I don't know the technical details uh, yeah, uh, by heart. But if you want to, yeah, we can dig in a little bit after uh, of this Q and A. Thank you. More questions? Okay, that's it then. Thank you.